Yarny family. Bonjour. Um, I have a little bit of confession. I lost the very first take of this vlog. No idea where it went, just disappeared from my computer. So there's a couple things you should know prior to watching this vlog. Uh, this was uh, filmed with the intentions at the beginning that I would use this amigurumi piece as a part of the decoration in my baby shower on one of the tables. It didn't work out because you know how life goes. But uh, one thing you should know is that I was filming a lot of this confessional stuff at night and I had an in-law staying at my house and I did not want to ruin her sleep, hence my hushed tones. Usually I'm pretty loud and don't care who hears me, but I wanted to be respectful of uh, my relatives staying at my house and I wanted to be a good host. So that's why I was really quiet. I came up with this design. It was inspired by my baby shower invitations clip art that I use to design my baby shower invites. So I will later on in the video show you a picture of what I'm talking about. But just so you know, that's where the inspiration came from. I did use an eight millimeter hook to begin with and it didn't work out. I'll talk about that. The yarn that I used for this project, I had to write it down because I forgot. I used two kinds of yarns. I used two colors of the Yarn Bees Effortless Super Bulky Yarn in Orange Spice and Biscotti. And then I used I Love This Chunky Yarn in a Heathered Brown color. And I will show you how I rearrange all these colors later. I loved this project. It was super fun and I was really excited at the, get, at the start of it but you can see that my baby shower drained my energy and I was truly someone that was visibly tired. But I'm super excited to show you how this amigurumi turned out. I think it was really cute in the end and it's currently sitting in my baby room and I can't wait for my child to grow up with something that I made for them. So without further ado, here is my Woven Tales Designs workshop episode of Floppy the Fox. Enjoy. <laughs> the last minute prep of my baby shower took over the rest of the week, but I'm still adamant on making one of these for my baby room. I wanted to uh, think about the construction of it a little bit better. So I did. Biggest thing I did, I changed to a nine millimeter hook because I didn't like how tight the stitches were working up. This is what it looks like with the head. Stuffed. This is kind of like the pre ear and nose situation. I tried doing this like shaping here in the front for the snout, didn't go well. So I am going to make the snout separately. And then I went ahead and found my placement for the eyes. I was originally trying to put the eyes like here. And then when I looked at it in the front, it was like, it looked like the eyes were going like this. <laughs> So I ended up saying, oh no, no, no. The eyes should be like symmetrical to the center of the nose. This snout will be a lot lower and come up. Then we're gonna have ears like normal, but this is the shape of the head. It's a little more short this way. It's not like a full circle, but um, I'm happy with that because it does match the drawing better, the proportions of the fox head. I'm not going to close up this because I think when I go to attach it, I want to have that like kind of neck. I did leave back loops unworked in one of the rounds and that is because um, I want to create like tuft, like a little crocheted layer of like almost like hair that's like flipped out like that because a lot of foxes kind of have that like hair wisping out like that. So I wanted to emulate that because I thought that was very foxy. So I will be doing the body next. And then I can do the arms, the legs, the tail, and then we'll come back to the ears, snout, and hair tufts. T-U-F-T-S, tufts. <laughs> so I think that will work out. Very exciting. Not completely lost faith in myself. Um, I did leave a long tail for sewing later. I did remember that from a lot of Mikarumi um, videos I've watched. I will catch you in the recap of the body. Yeah. Hello, and it is day three of working on this amigurumi project. So, 
body was a success. Didn't have to do a lot of jerry-rigging and figuring things out, which is nice. So here we have the body. Um, and I made sure that I left it all fastened off with the same amount of stitches as the head. So that way I can easily sew that on like so. So this is done. Now I'm moving on to the arms. Now I could do the arms and the legs all the same, but then I looked at the picture again of the invitation. They're not the same. The proportions are different. The arms are more of like one dimension the whole way down dark on the bottom for where the paws are because they're like a dark brown and then the rest of the arm is that spiced orange color so I think this is like so far what I have for that and I'm just going to continue to work it up a little bit longer if I attach the arms directly at the side here I do want it to hang probably about two-thirds the way down so I'll probably do maybe like another three or four rows rounds of the orange and then call it a day yeah, so it's going well. Don't even know if I'm gonna stuff it all the way. I think maybe I'll just stuff the bottom bit, like maybe this bottom half here, like here down, and then it's a little more it lays flat on the side because if you stuff the entire arm, then it's gonna stick out like that. Well, I'm on my back patio if you're wondering where the heck I am. That is a desk behind me. That was one of my first Woven Tales workshop projects. Um, I was supposed to refurbish that and refinish it, and um, that was last Christmas and we are at uh, Thanksgiving this year, so hopefully I can get that done too, but that's another Woven Tales Designs workshop video episode. Um, I'm gonna work up another arm once this is complete like this and catch you up with how I did the legs. The legs are gonna be a little bit tricky. They're gonna start the same, but then they're gonna get wider at the top because I do want that I don't know, you see you see the picture of the fox here. Like it's it's I, I want it to be a little bit different in proportion um, to kind of match that illustration. So wish me luck on the legs because that's a little bit different, but I have faith. Alright, same day, different outfit. So this is an arm finished. I did a little bit of a different approach with the legs. Instead of doing like a full tube like I did the arm, I ended up doing a tube, but then did some increasing and then only worked through half of half of the uh, top edge for the last four row, rows, I'll say, because they're not rounds anymore. Um, and that ended up making it to a point where I stuffed a little bit on the inside, and then when I go to attach it, it's going to rest like this, kind of on the side. I'm gonna flatten this part. That'll be sewn down. And then this little like kind of like, it goes out like that with the shaping, that'll get stuffing in it. So it kind of looks like a little bit like, like a hamstring. I wanted the fox to be sitting. We'll see how it looks when I attach it. I add just a little bit of stuffing into like this cupped area here, which is like the top of like the hip joint or whatever you call it. Then I made the tail and here we go. Very standard. Did a little color changing in here, and uh, I think it looks pretty standard. Before I do any sewing, though, I do want to make the ears and the snout. So working on that next. Hello, Oliver. You just jumped into my background. Uh, so I'm going to do the ears and the snout for the face, so it stops looking like a creepy eyeball head thing. Once I have those two constructed, those two things, then we will sew it all together and pray it looks like a fox. It's exciting to get to this point. Hopefully the proportions don't look too weird, but maybe that's my aesthetic. Maybe I'm not meant to look like other Megarumi artists and how they crochet. Well, later in the evening, didn't take too long, thank God. Snout finished. I think it's pretty cute. It was a little difficult to figure out how to start it, and I feel like it, I almost feel like it could be bigger, but I kind of like the size of it, so I think I'm gonna keep it. And then I have the ears. So I made an outer ear, like so, and an inner ear, which is just white. I was debating on whether I should use pink or not for that part, but I didn't really feel like buying an entire skein of pink, thick yarn 
just for the inner ear and not use it anywhere else. So what I could do is leave it like this and then take some blush and do a little bit of rosiness on the inside of the ear. So all I have to do before I sew it on is like start weaving in ends, like this was left with a lot of ends, so clean that up. Here's one of the ears without the ends. And this is for sewing in. Then I have to attach the white inner ear to the outer ear. I'm kind of nervous. I'm nervous because I have a, I have this fear it's like I'll like parts of it and then hate some of it. And then I'll be a perfectionist and like rip it apart. But that's a waste of yarn. So I can't do that. So it is what it is. Let's move along, shall we? If you've listened to this vlog and watched this vlog so far, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I really do have a lot of fun with my Woven Tales Designs workshops here, and that's just my personal code for challenging myself and trying my best to put myself out there as a maker. Posting these videos um, kind of holds me accountable as well for the projects that I do. And mad respect to all Amigurumi artists out there that do this on the regular. Amigurumi is such a different form of crochet construction and I fully appreciate everything that they do. I cannot wait to work on some more projects of my own with Amigurumi. I definitely need to invest in a curved tapestry needle because my fingers and hands were so fatigued with weaving in all these parts and sewing them on because I really had to push that needle through this really thick yarn. And if this is your kind of content, please like and subscribe to my channel. And let's see what this little fox turns into. Um, I think you're gonna like it, but I was pretty, uh, I had mixed feelings about it at first. Let's just say that. Okay, I am really hesitant to show this because it's cute, but I will not be selling or making this pattern. This is just, oh man, appreciation for Amigurumi artists, literally like 101. Without further ado, may I present to you Floppy the Fox. <laughs> oh, its head won't stay up. <laughs> it's so floppy, but it's kind of cute. It's kind of like a ragdoll fox. When I hold its head up, it's 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 got some it's got some character. Say hi. <laughs> Hello, Floppy the Fox. I think I did okay. I will not be making anything like this again uh, without a pattern. This is my first time trying to make my own pattern with a Migurumi. It took three days of sitting down with it. Not three days long, but it took three days. But it is kind of cute actually. I don't know, I kind of like it. I think this will sit in like my nursing chair and just kind of be there. But I literally couldn't even photograph it because it's head is so floppy. Thank you so much for watching this wonderful episode of Woven Tales Designs Workshop. I hope you enjoyed this. If you are someone like me and you have struggled to find the courage to do something, don't struggle, just do it. It's, it's honestly very freeing to know that there's no expectations. You don't have to be an expert at every part of crochet. Clearly, I have my work cut out for me. Would I do this again? Probably not. Um, but would I do this with someone else's pattern? Yeah, yeah. But me and Floppy had a great time, didn't we Floppy? Yeah, yeah we did. Here's a little like, what have I learned from working on my first free-handed Amigurumi project? I have learned that thick yarn works up faster, but it is so heavy and the structure isn't as like easy to work with. Also have learned that if you are looking for a weight six, you can find a soft, squishy, bulky five weight and double strain it and you get a good, decent six. That works well. Symmetry matters <laughs> because if you're off just by like a half a row 
or like a couple stitches to the left, then your project is not gonna sit symmetrical. So there's that lesson. I've also learned that it does take just as much time to sit down and perfect an amigurumi pattern as it would be for a other, an other crochet pattern. I think I'm gonna stick to what I'm good at because this is not it. I'm not terrible. Um, the tail was actually pretty good, but um, obviously this is just, this is gonna be a happy memory for me. And I've just learned that, you know what? It's okay to like have things be lopsided and off center and whatever. I am a perfectionist at heart and this was a good practice for me to not try to be a perfectionist, to just let it be, just, just design, just do it. Just do what you think is good um, and go with it. I did thankfully not have to play yarn chicken with this project. I bought the right amount of yarn. I have some left over that I'll probably reuse for other projects, but look at, look at Floppy the Fox. Doing great over here. So there's that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope that if you like videos like this, where you get to watch me struggle, and I'm just sitting here on my big comfy couch with my dog and my animals and uh, my creations, then stay tuned for the next episode. I got lots to come. I hope you have a magical day adding magic to your stitches in your own way. Hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to find more fun videos by me, Nicole of Woven Tales Designs. And until the next episode, we'll see you later. Say bye bye. Here we go. I don't know what I'm doing. Piece of personal make. Get out of my bag. Love long and prosper. All those good things. I don't know. Um. Oh shoot. Big yawn. That's my dog's foot. Stretching out. Mm -hmm. Ah, big yawn. It's on the floor. Oh my gosh. You're just a little drunk, aren't you? Oh, excuse me. I hope my baby likes you. Ta-ta.